to you guys, and even better, man, not just the fact that you guys have new music, but you guys have been doing so much. Tour over in the UK, uh, award winners, uh, lots going on with 2022. Man, it's been a whirlwind already. So it all just sort of um, kicked off really in the UK, um, you know, with our tour over there, which is kind of the, was the precursor or the beginning of the something new tour just before the new single came out. And, uh, and of course, the, the, the win at CMA Ontario for Grupo or Duo of the Year was an absolutely amazing surprise. I, I don't know if, uh, if uh, you know, you'd heard at all, but the, the story behind that was James and I were, were staying at uh, a hotel near Heathrow Airport in London, England. And of course, James and I, we always share hotel rooms on the road. You know, and we do that often by choice because then we can kind of, plan and you know keep things on the rails and strategize for the next kind of couple of days of the tour and stuff but anyway of course uh in true john fashion i had left my uh sound on my phone and the time difference means it's like really early in the morning at the hotel and james is in the bed over next to me and uh and then my phone just starts blowing in different up. beds in, yeah. yeah of course he, he likes me got... sleeping in a different bed. <laughs> yeah, we, have... We do sleep in two different beds. We're brothers, we're close, but we're, we're, we're you know. Bunk beds, there you go. <laughs> Bunk beds, I thought it'd be great. But anyway, no, we, uh, my phone just starts blowing up. And of course, James is just like, John, I've told you a million times, can you please just turn your phone sound off when we go, when we go to bed at night? And then um, sure enough, uh, I kind of figured something was happening, whether it was good news or, or sort of, uh, you know, better luck next year news. Uh, but I knew either way, if I checked my phone in the middle of the night that I wouldn't get back to sleep. So I waited. And then hours later, when I finally woke up, I woke James up uh, and said, James, well, <laughs> we're group or duo of the year. So that was a really awesome really surprise. Nice. And, uh, we still got some sleep. So that's good. I, I love that. James, how was the UK tour? It was amazing. I mean, um, you know, not having been able to play for the last couple of years, it made it really refreshing. But those audiences in general are very um energetic w with listening to and coming and supporting live music and so it was an amazing way just to kind of get that feeling back and get that excitement back for getting out and touring and we played um an amazing festival of now it's grown to about forty thousand people in the south of england and um, that came out of a show that we played um in london in the in the basement of a bar to like five to ten people so you never know what can happen if you just go out and you put yourself out there and then we played a uh, another show at a cathedral rochester cathedral and oh. cathedrals of course are really there's there's only um, so many right in england and, and they're really quite a big deal and so we are we every time are so honored to to be able to have that opportunity and and it's sort of grown into um quite a neat little tour we have played in more uh, places in the past uh just you know small some smaller venues but just getting back out on the road it was nice to kind of hit those big two two big uh shows and then back to uh, north america where we will eventually come back to canada so we're excited for that that's great john how did you guys have so much success when the world was basically going to hell during the pandemic what were you guys doing to keep that positive vibe going that was able to get through all this to reach where you are now yeah i mean rudy it's a great question because of course for james and i and you've known us now what seven six yeah seven years i mean oh god i think a little longer than that man I think longer than that. Going back farther right and yeah and, uh, so you know that touring is is obviously a big uh, part of our heart and soul of, of what we do and and has been for over 20 years now since we were little kids but so not having the touring um suddenly in 2020 um was very different for us really quite different um now i will say the first summer of 2020 it was a, a little bit of a welcome break if there was one silver lining it, it gave us some time to kind of step back off the road we've kind of over the years um just toured and recorded and toured and written and recorded and done all those things right and um this at least if there was one positive thing that came from a very difficult time otherwise not being able to tour it kind of forced us to to get back and woodshed um, the new record and really sit in 
the kind of music that we wanted to present on this next record. And so James took up audio recording in a really big way and audio production. We did a bunch of that stuff at home. We started collaborating, uh, collaborating with uh, Tog Salter, who's our producer on this record. And Togs is a incredible hit maker with Hunter Hayes and, and yeah, yeah. Uh, Off the Earth and Scott Helm and a bunch of really great artists. Um, so we were able to last year get down to Nashville for you know a couple of weeks and work with Togs on the record. A lot of collaborations on this record with um, you know on the writing side between you know Togs and Gordy Sampson, who's just a powerhouse writer, and a bunch of amazing pop and uh, country hit writers on this record. So it kind of all gelled together, and then uh, to round out the year last year. We signed with uh, Grassroots and GPS Management out of Nashville uh, in the fall, which was a big step for us. And uh, Paladin Artists, our, uh, our booking agents who are now helping our Canadian booking agents, Takamoto is our booking agency in Canada, Paul is the best, and our US booking agents now are out of New York City at Paladin Artists, and they've just like, been cranking out the dates for us in the States. So it kind of all happened at once, but after a period of reflection and, and time really just marinating in the new music. James, how did you put this uh production studio together because i know for myself i mean amazon was busy okay <laughs> like i was just like okay this doesn't work so let me get this and let me get that because i couldn't go anywhere to get anything here in toronto yeah. so it was crazy and the thing i also love too is the fact that a lot of artists i spoke with their closets became their sound booths so what did you do yeah well, it's a great question i mean um it was such an education in, in seeing how powerful you can be with just even a very small amount of gear when you sort of yeah. focus uh, on on getting the right things the right microphones the right um stuff and if you keep it simple with some of that stuff uh, you really can record especially when when you're recording um real instruments and stuff that john and i play um you can uh you can get a lot you can go quite a, uh, a long way with not too too much but you have to spend money in the right places i'll tell you i got um it's really a dangerous road when there's so much you can get in terms of plugins and whatnot these days it almost becomes an addiction like you can all of a sudden you can just realize oh my gosh i don't have any money left to get anything <laughs> um it's a it's an amazing world i've i've loved getting into it um but as i say there's so much amazing stuff out there i think it's just for me, it was just keeping it simple and getting the right um, microphones um, for our instruments. And, um, and you know, you've got, that's a great uh, example, using closets or uh, makeshift kind of uh, booths, if you will, with soundproofing is, a, is an amazing way that you can really take a very small amount and run a long way with it, right? So I'm still learning. It, I'll always be learning, but uh, it's been great to get into that space. I, I learned so much too, man. I mean, that, that was one of the cool things. I know a lot of people said that, if you didn't learn something during the pandemic, then you were just a lazy you-know-what because uh, I learned a hell of a lot of different things. Like even just doing this, I would never have done it before. I was always like, no, i got to get over now. Yeah. I could not give up Zoom. I love setting up Zoom. But, John, did, I'm just curious because we're going to talk about the new single in a second, though. Uh, and, again, I talked to a lot of artists about this. Did your music – how do I put this? writing music and writing songs in your vision of music did it change because of the experience of the pandemic and what we saw uh through the news and through social media did your vision change and did your stories change to say to what it was when we were you know having lunch together and sitting down and talking about you know the way the world was back then yeah no that's a good question you know i think one of the things that james and i really were sort of inwardly directed at thinking about um, throughout the pandemic was, you know, just the fact that our family is such a big part of our lives and, and, and not being able to see even the closest people in your life, uh, you know, it was really, um, it was really qu quite a difficult thing to confront, right? And so um, I think what it did was it helped James and I focus our uh, music back into the roots of what we do. So we grew up playing, you know, bluegrass and, and uh, old time country uh, all throughout the, the, you know, the U.S. when we were kids. We actually specifically, U.S. and Canada, but, but a lot in the States, I mean, particularly with the bluegrass stuff, right? And our first two records we recorded in the Blue Ridge Mountains in Virginia at this little 
you know, cabin shack uh, recording studio that was right next to a huge chicken farm. And, you know, I, <laughs> I love I, it. James and I being forced to think about how difficult it was to not be around our, you know, family for periods of time during lockdown um, made us think about all the memories and all the really special moments we've had together with our family when we're out on tour and, and making those memories. And it focuses you on those memories in a different way. I'm sure you appreciate Rudy than, than you did before. You just sort of did, we didn't never took our family for granted. You know, it's a part of our story, but it was, it was like a special focus we had when we were working on this music. So James and I, that really helped us when it came to coming up with ideas for how we wanted this record to sound. We wanted to dive back in a big way into those days in the shack in uh, the Blue Ridge Mountains of Virginia, uh, you know, recording some of that early stuff. Uh, and we wanted to do it in a really fresh way. And we wanted to do it in a way that we had never done before. And the, the partnership with Togs, which thankfully in between lockdowns, we were able to get down and do together uh, in person. Um, partnership with Togs was awesome because uh, Togs has a similar family story. Uh, Togs, uh, he, uh, his dad was a big bluegrass guy. And so Togs is this big pop and country hit producer, but he grew up listening to bluegrass and the seldom scene and all these old time bluegrass bands with his dad. And so we immediately had a connection there that I think only came out of the fact that we had time to sit and think about those things that really matter to us. Um, and, uh, you know, also the people that James and I have in our lives, my wife, uh, Alex, James just got married, his wife, Kyla, um, you know, like they, we, we got each other through this pandemic and they inspired us as well, um, just as our immediate family, um, you know, on those memories and ideas. So that's really, that kind of gives you an idea of where, how this all gelled from home. James, how the hell did you get married during the pandemic, man? It was one of the hardest things I've heard. You're not the only country artist to do it too. Um, cause I've talked to a couple of them. It's like, it's nice. like, it's funny. It's like, now I'm thinking about it. A lot of Canadian country artists got married during the pandemic. Like <laughs> what the well, hell? In all fairness, yep. I yep. actually, <laughs> yeah, I, in all fairness, um, yes, it was, it was, it was very difficult. Um, but, uh, <laughs> I actually had planned it in 2019 and we had a date set for, uh, 2020 and uh and of course uh, everything happened and so we actually had to postpone it at least three if not four times and then it was right just just this past spring that we that we were able to finally get it together so um i think if for if there's probably other people that got into the pandemic and were you know spent some time with that significant other and then made that decision but i actually did have i did well listen we have uh, kyla and i I've been together for 10 years, actually, since uh, I was in high school. And um, and so uh, it was about yeah, time. Long time coming. It was about time. <laughs> okay, but here's, no. here's the thing, James. I want to stick with you here. Okay, so let me get this straight. You got a wedding you're trying to get to make happen. Yeah. You're putting together a recording studio yeah. so you guys can record music that you've been writing. Yeah. And you're dealing, of course through all this through the pandemic so question is how do you still have hair on your head and not have pulled it all out because honestly i would have lost my mind if i had to deal with all of these things and added not knowing really what the future was going to be as we know now amazing future but no idea what the hell was going to happen in yeah. the future yeah i mean uh it's thank you i appreciate that it makes it makes it uh all the, doing all those things and sort of the effort hearing someone give me a compliment makes me feel a little better about it but uh it it, it was uh for both john and i and for everyone obviously it, it it was a time um of of a lot of uncertainty and um i'm i'm so thankful to see the people um like you and and other people in in our industry that are here uh after i know that there's probably a lot of people that um I haven't even realized yet that maybe I had to take a career uh, choice, you know, change. And, and so, um, and that I, I absolutely, you know, if whatever was best for, for their situation, I, I applaud them. Um, but, you know, I really, some comments like that from you are great encouragement for John and I, because um, we understand that like, like for everyone else, it, it, um, we're just so thankful to be able to do what we do. And so now that we're all, 
into this next era here. It just gives us a great uh, amount of thankfulness, I think. Hey, John. Yeah, and, and I'll say, I, I don't, I, I don't think James would disagree that there, you know, there's always difficult moments through something like that. Like, I mean, like there were certainly difficult moments where we, where we, you know, got pretty introspective and, and, and thought, man, like, like, is there an end to this you know, tunnel? And, and, but, you know, we just kept the faith because James and I, the music has always kept us together. And we've always known that that's a constant in our lives, no matter what. And we knew that, you know, listen, just hang in and, and good things will come and, and just keep working and keep coming up with new ideas and, and, um, and, you know, just keep a steady hand on the wheel. And that, that honestly is, I think just being on the road since we were kids and having 20 years of it really, um, you know, uh, like it, it makes it feel like no matter what, we're always going to be around doing this. And it's, we're always going to be pushing forward and we're always going to be, um, you know, coming up with new music. So it, because we didn't start yesterday, it really helped us keep that faith and keep that candle burning throughout the, uh, the difficult time that was the pandemic. And, and we're sure as heck happy now that we did because, you know, the summer is, really turn into something special and, and this year is just like revving up like crazy with the new song and i still have a couple hairs I'm still <laughs> i still do i've got a lot more hair john's got way more hair yeah. james let's talk about it man new single what is the new single called how does it resent, represent the the two of you right now and yeah. may i add wow Harmonies between the two of you, folks Thank have got to go on your Instagram because you guys sing this song everywhere, acapella, whatever. Amazing, amazing. What's the new single called, please? New single is called the new single is called something new, and it actually ties into the conversations we've been having because this song really uh, spoke to John and I because of our long-term relationships with our significant others, and um, the song is is touching on that idea of. Uh, someone that knowing someone that you love for a long period of time and they are some uh you know that's something that you feel like you uh or an ex uh, over a long period of time you think that you know everything about them but they keep revealing new things uh about themselves to you and those uh, our significant others are people that do that uh, for us and i'm sure everybody has someone like that and maybe it's maybe it's not necessarily in in the love um you know uh, angle but maybe it's like a family member in, in in a different way so that idea of people that you love that keep showing you new sides of themselves um that's really something that spoke to john and i and of course the song itself is just was written in, in a really nice way. And so, hey, John, that's really what. Yeah, that's and, and I, I think that kind of the, the additional layer of that, too, is that James and I have been doing this music thing for a really long time. And, and you know, we, we think after all this time, we've maybe figured everything out about the way that we play and the way sure. that we gel as, a, as, a, as artists together. Um, but like, you know, this whole record and this whole, you know, set of music just is a fresh turn for us. It's, it is in and of itself something very new for, for James and I. And, uh, and it's kind of surprised us like in, in a really big way, just like, you know, the content of the song. Right. So I think that, that kind of the song kind of means a lot to us on, a, on multiple levels. And, and it's also just listen, Rudy, like it's a positive summer feel good song. Right. And I think that's something that all of us need more than ever now is like that kind of optimism positivity. and positivity. Right. And that's what James and I try to do. You know, that it's ever since fine, like all those early days when you're hanging with us, you know, like it, it's, it, it's always been about trying to create uh, opportunities for positivity and, and encouragement for our fans and, and friends out there. So. Amen to that. But John, is this the best song for you guys to represent your harmonizing? Because honestly, like I said, I was watching all of the, the videos off of Instagram and all I kept saying was, like, I've heard you, I've seen you guys perform. I've heard you guys perform. But just those stops that you did performing that song, it's, like I said, to me, it's the best song to represent your vocal talents. Oh. Man, thank, thank you so much. We actually, we feel the same. Uh, we honestly feel like we left the studio uh, working with Togs, and we both turned to each other when we were on our way home, and we, and we said, like, this hands down when we we're just even hearing rough stuff like we we said hands down this is the best capturing of our essence as the abrams in the studio yeah. ever like we, we we don't feel like we've ever caught captured it 
as well as this. And it's a big kudos to Togs and, and the collaboration we had together with him at Johnny Reed Studio in, uh, in Nashville at Soul Train. Like it, it, and, the, and the team as well that work with us down there, those guys are awesome. And, uh, and we just, we're so thankful because we just listened to this and go, oh my goodness, this completely sounds so purely Abrams. Yeah. And yet it really pulled everything out of our story and everything out of our artistry that you know we've ever sort of developed before so i think it really it's a whole new level for us for sure thanks for absolutely saying agree. Thank absolutely you, agree absolutely agree james uh great song ep album future we looking at coming. it's coming yeah it's it is coming. We, yeah. we uh we've got it in the hopper here all the songs are actually done so yeah. so it's all uh all here and and uh and you know we're just we're really pumped that this is the first uh first step forward on that Cannot wait. We know you guys are on tour. We know you guys have got great music coming out. Man, you guys are great examples of what you can do during tough times to make sure that you walk into that light. Before we wrap it up, I'm going to give you each a chance. Any positive words you want to give folks out there? Because especially with a lot of bands out there who are, you know, in Toronto, we lost a lot of venues. People are trying to find spots. I mean, yeah, you know, they've got their summer concert you know, series happening everywhere, but it's going to get tough when the winter rolls around. What advice can you give? I'd say go see live music. Like just go do it. Like sometimes for folks, it's, it's been tough getting out of this pandemic. And, and, uh, and I know it's, uh, it's, it's a lot, there's a lot to that people worry about still with that, but you know what, rip the bandaid off, go out and whatever comfortable level of comfort you need. If you got to wear your mask, whatever you got to do, but go and support live music because there's nothing like being in congregation with other people at a show. Honestly, that is the most, some of the most important, um, you know, sort of, it's, it's some of the most important things you can do, uh, you know, for your own mental health and for your own well-being. And so that if there's one thing that we got to say, you know, whoever it is, go support the live bands that you love to see. And if it's, and if it's uh, artists that we're talking to, I would just say, obviously, do what you need to do, um, you know, to get by day to day. Uh, if that's what you have to do and, and if that's outside of music, then that, that is what it is. However, don't give up your dream and don't give up the gift that you have yes. in creating um, because an opportunity will arise for you to be able to get back out there and do it. And, um, you know, if it doesn't make sense right now, that, that is what it is. But just don't give up that that dream and that hope because there will be an opportunity for you to, to get back into it. And um, that's what I'd say probably to artists. And, uh, yeah. yeah. Absolutely agree. Look, when it's in your blood, it's in your blood. You can never yeah. give it up. Yeah. yeah. Gentlemen, congratulations. Great talking to you guys, man. Um, I am so looking forward to seeing you guys. I'm not going to make it up to the CCMAs this year. With the way travel is, I don't want to get myself caught in that nonsense. Right. So I'm hoping at some point in time, you guys here, Southern Ontario, yeah, somewhere, oh, I can yeah. drive down and I can catch you guys. Yeah, but we're, thank we're you so booking, much. We're thank booking you, a cross-Canada tour right now. We haven't announced it yet, but we're booking it right now. So we'll let you in on that, Rudy, and let you know that we'll be, we'll be coming through. That's for sure. Fantastic. Big love to you guys, man. Thanks again. Thanks, buddy. Come to see you.